Hello everyone and welcome back to our newest edition of The Light Between Us, our special segment that you find here every single month on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora exclusively and it celebrates the team members of Chick-fil-A Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay, both here in our community of Central and Upstate New York. It is my honor, my privilege to have today's guest and someone that you'll be able to see timeless on facebook.com backslash wakeupcalldt, on wakeupcalldt.com's Chick-fil-A pages, as well as on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt, and that is Joe Williams. Joe, happy to have you back. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you, What's too. Going on, guys? So... As you know, when it comes to the light between us, we love to tell the stories of the team members of Chick-fil-A. There really is no script to anything here, as there never is with Wake Up Call, because I like people to be themselves. So, Joe, you and I met a few years back, and when we met, we were doing a CNS broadcast right here at Chick-fil-A Cicero on 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, New York. And so that was our first experience together. The Joe that I met back then and the Joe that I am sitting with today, what's changed in between? Oh, man. So much has changed from when I was a junior in high school to who I am now. Back then, I was, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still a go-getter, but I was going to get something different than what I am now. Um, I went to college to run track and field. Yep. Things were popping off super great. I got injured my freshman year, and that definitely was a huge setback for me. Um, it took a lot. It took a huge toll on me mentally. And came back sophomore year, bounced back a little bit, started getting back into the swing of things, started getting in the feel of everything. And then everybody knows when the COVID virus hit, it shifted a lot of people's, the way they moved, the way they did things. And I took effect to one of those, I was one of those people who took effect to it. And I did some thinking, I had a really long conversation with my father and I slowly realized that maybe school wasn't my thing. And I say that to everybody out there, like if you are nervous about school or going to school, don't, follow the path make your own wave yeah. you got to create your own wave and that's what i've been doing here and it's almost been a year now since i've been home and i've slowly worked my way up into management here at chick-fil-a and it's honestly been life-changing and i couldn't be happier around that so for you when you went through the injury you thought that there was a path that you had as a student athlete then the injury happens Bring me through what that did mentally for you when you feel like, okay, I'm here, I'm a student athlete, I got it going on, I, I'm, I'm playing D1, you know, I'm, I'm in D1, I have a great future ahead of me, and then an injury hits, which is out of your control. How did you handle that mentally? You know, I, I tried to stay resilient. No matter what, like you said, it's completely out of my control, and I can't change the things that I can't control. Yeah. There's no need to get extremely upset over things you can't control. But with something that devastating, especially to me, being an athlete ever since I was five years old, playing football, and then I went to school for track, regardless, being an athlete, like, deep down inside me, that killed me. But I had a really good support system around me. Yeah. And I had a ton of friends that went through injuries as well. And they told me to just keep my head high and keep supporting the rest of my team and let them, let myself live through them. And uh, they helped lift me up and get me out of that. But when I came back, it was, it was lit when I came back. It was definitely lit when I came back. Yeah. So for you to go through all of that and then when COVID hit and it caused, really, I mean, in my opinion, and when people say, well, did God give this to us? I said, no, God didn't give you a pandemic. But God is an opportunist. So he didn't give it to you. He wasn't, hey, hey I want to, you know, make all these people sick. But the reset button. When, when this happened, God kind of very rarely in the history of mankind has something happened to everyone. The same thing happened at the same time to the whole world. And when the whole world experiences something together, to me, it's a way to sit and reflect. It made us all stop. 
it made us all ask ourselves the question, am I happy with who I'm with, where I'm with, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it? It should have really been an opportunity for you to either hit the reset button or say, you know what? Okay, listen, I'm good where I'm going. I'm good with what I'm doing. So I think that this was kind of God's way of cleansing in a way. How did you cleanse throughout this process of the last almost two years? So in in my perspective, when you say reset button, I felt that 1,000% because for the first few months of the semester, I knew that I wasn't happy where I was. Yeah. And this was the end of the spring semester of my sophomore year. We were about to go on vacation to Myrtle Beach, start training, doing a couple meets, whatever. Boom, the whole trip got canceled. Everybody got sent home. Everybody was on lockdown. And not only did that force everybody to be in solitude, be by themselves, stay away from everybody, that also forced everybody to get trapped in their own mind with their own thoughts, with their with the way they were doing things. Like, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Yeah. And I was one of those people. I, I was in Buffalo from, I want to say, the beginning of March till beginning of May. Two months just on lockdown. Yeah. Living out the rest of the semester, no sports. Just I was by myself in my dorm room. And it trained me to, it trained my brain to know how to make decisions, hard decisions for myself. Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, you can always call, pick up the phone, talk to somebody, but there's no human interaction. Yeah. Like, it, it still feels weird to be, like, be sitting next to you because it's like, <laughs> we came such a long way. And, like, I remember flashback to then, like, you couldn't come in within six feet of one another without either having a mask on or even in general. You couldn't come into Chick Fil A Cicero. You can only order drive through. Yeah, you and couldn't we, even walk in the building. And we were in the top five percent for sales. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, um, I never take anything for granted. And as crazy as this pandemic has been, I'm extremely grateful for what it's taught me and what it is teaching me. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm very grateful. What did it teach you? It taught me to not be afraid to listen to every part of you. You might have one part of you telling you to do something, you're gonna have another part of yourself telling you to do something else. Yeah. And there's no sign telling you to go with the first thing that something's telling you. You gotta weigh out all your options, take it day by day, and live in the moment rather than the future. There's this incredible thing about there's past, present, and future. But if you focus on the past, you get stuck. If you focus on the future, you never get anywhere. But if you focus on the present, you inevitably create a good past and you build toward a bright future. The only way to truly have all three of them be positive is to focus on the present. Because the present becomes the past and it eventually becomes the future. Amen. Amen. You know? So for you, Joe, to, to be where you're at... What did Chick-fil-A do to help you become really who who Joe is, who you were meant to be? You thought you were a student athlete. You thought you were going in this direction. You come home. You have a long talk with your dad. You go through everything with the pandemic, and you've been here about a year, and you've worked into management. What has Chick-fil-A done to bring out the best in you? Everyone in not only this restaurant – but even at Clay, shout out my boy Ike. Um, Ike Jarvis. Yeah. Ike Jarvis. I know, I know Ike well. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that that man that man taught me a lot when I came back, and then when he went to the Clay store, he taught me to boss up. Yeah. And I got to do stuff on my own. But no, everybody here, um, I love everybody here. They they are the reason why I do the things that I do. Like to to all the guests that come through. If you know me well enough, I jump over every guardrail outside you see. I take laps around the building. I'm always a go, 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 go. Because of how well everybody gets along. And when I see everybody encouraging everybody, it makes me want to be more encouraging. Because it just brings out the best in everybody. 
everybody here, everyone's energy here, everyone's positivity. And it's, it's something I don't see every day. And I love coming to work every day. I love giving everybody smiles, high fives, dapping everybody up. Say, let's have a good day. We get up a line to Route 11 for four hours and I'd be ready to go for the entire day. Why is Chick-fil-A, especially under Jim Rosikowski, who's an incredible human being, owner-operator of, of both Cicero and Clay, it's hard enough to become an owner-operator of one Chick-fil-A franchise. It's almost dang near impossible. There's like 1% right. make, have, have multiple franchises. It's still crazy. Around. Working with Jimmer has done what for you? Now... Jimmer and I, I've known Jimmer since I was a junior in high school. Yeah, when we, around when we did the show. Right, yeah. yeah. And he, he hired me right out of high school. And I sat down with him. I had, him, I had my interview with him, and it didn't even feel like an interview. Yeah. He, he didn't ask me job questions like he asked me all my life. And we literally just had a conversation like you and I are having right now. And from the moment I met him, like... I knew that he, there was so much more than what he was giving me. And I wanted to find out what was beneath the surface of this man. And come to find out, he's not only a great boss, but a really, really, really close friend of mine. And like over this past year, since I've been home, I've gone to his house a ton of times. Yeah. I helped decorate his tree. The tree <laughs> f looks phenomenal, by the way. <laughs> Fair Me enough. being six foot five helps a lot with that. Yeah, just a little star on the top. Yeah, all that. Um, but work. But I, I was. I had a conversation with him a couple of weeks ago, and I told him that like sometimes I don't even feel like I'm coming to work. Like it doesn't feel like a job. Yeah. Like I want to be here, and I refer to it as my restaurant too, yeah. because that's how much I care about the place, how I care about him and his family, and everything that's brought me and taught me and just I never feel like there's ever going to be enough to pay back what he's done for me so to pay it forward as Jimmer would ask he would he would probably say sitting here right now he would say well don't give it back to me give it to somebody else how do you pay it forward daily is it jumping the guardrails is it doing laps around the building how do you try to pay it forward I every time I have an interaction with a guest whether I'm outside, whether I'm sitting there bagging and people just come in to say hi, I want everyone to leave with a smile on their face. Yeah. Because for the past few months, I've been, not even, almost a year now, I've been, uh, I've been heavily practicing and preaching the golden rule from elementary school. Yeah. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Yeah. And as cliche and corny as that sounds, you can put a little mature spin on it put yourself in other people's shoes yeah and if i was somebody else and i was talking to them i would want to be happy talking to me so i just want to make everybody around me feel the way how i would want to feel and that's good so faith in all of this where is faith with you faith is all around me lately Every interaction that I've had with people lately, um, God has just been putting it in front of me and I'm taking it and doing the dash with it. It's it's something special. Like, I, I talk to my dad about this all the time. I said, I got really, really lucky and I'm very fortunate to be where I am. You know, and they, they say that luck is labor under correct knowledge, that, that there's something about luck you know, they say successful people always seem like they're really lucky. But I always think that when you see successful people doing things the right way and helping people and being humble about it, I think, I don't think it's luck. I think it's God. Yeah. I think God puts his best in positions to spread his word. Amen. We could Amen. sit here all day. You Joe. really could. <laughs> Come on, <now. laughs> Joe Williams, myself, Dan Tortora. This is the light between us. Joe, final note here in this special for Chick-fil-A, Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay. To somebody out here who's struggling right now, 
what's your advice to the world about keeping your faith and having a strong mind, trying to make sure that you're mentally tough? What would you want to say to people that are watching and listening? Now, as someone who has been through almost every trial and tribula tribulation you can think of, I will tell you that no matter what happens, it will always get better. Now you could be down in the dumps, depressed every day. You don't want to leave your bed. You don't want to eat. You don't want to talk to your family. Just there's a constant cumulonimbus cloud above you every day. But as long as you wake up the next day, you're doing something right. You just got to keep going. That comment from Joe Williams. No matter how bad it looks or how bad it feels, just keep moving forward and believe that it does get better. Because every time I thought that I was going to quit, I said, God, I can't, I can't do this. I can't face this. I look back and I go, that was 16 years ago. Right, look at you now. That was five months ago. Right. You know, it's a, it's a different world. So everything that is in your face right now trying to stop you, it will pass. I always tell people, fear is the devil's lie. On the other side, right on the other side, God is waiting to give you a gift, and you might not be able to see because, you know, you got you got the devil trying to block it. But if you can just get by that fear, I promise you on the other side of it, there's something waiting that's going to be far more beautiful than you could have ever expected or imagined. Agreed. And I will say it is 100% okay to not be okay. Yeah. Let yourself feel any emotion that you feel yourself about to feel. If you think you're going to cry, please cry. Because the more you bottle it up, you're going to erupt. Yeah. So just let yourself feel. That coming from Joe Williams, myself, Dan Tortora. This has been The Light Between Us, our special with Joe from Chick-fil-A Cicero. Come out here to 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, New York. And, of course, out to Chick-fil-A Clay right off of Route 31 in Liverpool as well. Joe, as always, I look forward to talking to you, brother. Until next time. Until next time. And, by the way, he is a man of his word because when I come in here, it doesn't matter how busy they are, this man runs over, gives me a big hug, and goes right back to business. You know the vibes, man. Thank you for being here, Joe. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Talk with you soon.